Nothing in this podcast or on our website should be construed as medical advice. Consult your healthcare provider for your individual nutritional and medical needs. The information presented is based on our research and is strictly that of the author and not necessarily those of any professional group or other individual. Hi, I'm Sue Becker from Bread Beckers. Welcome to Sue's Healthy Minutes. I'm so excited you've joined me today, and I hope this episode encourages you and allows you to find the answers you have been praying for, for the health of you and your family. Today, I want to share with you some fascinating information that I just learned about our innate immune response occurring right under our noses, or should I say, right in our noses. We are entering into not only a new year, but also what is often referred to as cold and flu season. The exact timing of the season can vary, but in the U.S., we usually begin to see increases in cold and flu in the fall around the month of October when temperatures start to become colder. I find it interesting, though, that according to the CDC, cold and flu activity seems to really peak between December and February. I've often thought that this peak could most likely be attributed to the holiday season of Thanksgiving and Christmas. While the weather has turned cooler and often less enjoyable to be outside, the holidays also bring lots of indoor gatherings with family and friends. And if we are honest, an overindulgence in less than healthy food options. Sweet treats and dietary splurges that we usually try to avoid throughout the year. But recently, I came across some very interesting research that shed a little more light on the cold and flu season and why we see such an increase in the colder months of fall and winter. The study was first published in December in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, and the findings were then reported in the Harvard Medicine Magazine and even some major news outlets. I'm going to read you some of the report. Benjamin Blyer, Harvard Medical School Associate Professor of Otolaryngology, Head and Neck Surgery at Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary, and the senior author of the study states, just like me, that conventionally it was thought that cold and flu season occurred in cooler months because people are stuck indoors more where airborne viruses could spread more easily. But he goes on to say, Our study, however, points to a biological root cause for the seasonal variation in upper respiratory viral infections that we see each year, most recently demonstrated throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. And in the study, he says, we uncovered an innate immune response triggered when bacteria are inhaled through the nose confirming that our first line of defense is in the nose. You see, the nose is one of the first points of contact between the outside environment and inside the body, and as such, a likely entry point for disease-causing pathogens. Pathogens are inhaled or directly deposited, such as by the hands, into the front of the nose where they work their way through the airway and into the body, infecting cells, which can lead to an upper respiratory infection. How the airway protects itself against these pathogens has long been poorly understood. That is, until this study in 2018. It was learned that cells in the front of the nose detected the bacteria and then released billions of tiny fluid-filled sacs called extracellular vesicles, or EVs for short, into the mucus in the nose to surround and attack the bacteria. Blyer compares this release of this EV swarm, as he calls it, to kicking a hornet's nest. The 2018 study also showed that the EVs shuttle protective antibacterial proteins through the mucus from the front of the nose 
to the back along the airway, which then protects other cells against the bacteria before they get too far into the body, making our nose an important first line of defense against bacterial infections. For the new study, though, the researchers sought to determine whether this immune response was also triggered by viruses inhaled through the nose, which are the source of some of the most common upper respiratory infections like cold and flu. They found in this study that each virus also triggered an EV swarm response from nasal cells, although used a signaling pathway different from the one used to fight off bacteria. In response to virus exposure, upon their release, the EVs actually acted as decoys, carrying receptors that the virus would bind to instead of nasal cells. The more decoys, the more the EVs can mop up the viruses in the mucus before the viruses have had a chance to bind to the nasal cells, which suppresses the infection, said Di Huang, also a research fellow from the Harvard Medical School. The researchers then tested how colder temperatures affected this response, which is especially relevant in nasal immunity given that the internal temperature of the nose is highly dependent on the temperature of the outside air that is inhaled through it. So they took healthy volunteers from a room temperature environment, about 74 degrees Fahrenheit, and exposed them to 39.9 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures for 15 minutes and found that the temperature inside the nose fell by about 9 degrees Fahrenheit. They then discovered that this decrease in temperature inside the nose from simply breathing cold air resulted in a decrease in the quantity of EV secreted by the nasal cells by 42% and that the antiviral proteins in the EVs were also impaired. From this observation, D. Wong, also Harvard Medical School researcher of otolaryngology, who led the research, states that combined, these findings provide a biological explanation for the seasonal variation in upper respiratory infections. So, what is our takeaway from all of this information I have shared with you today? First, I have to say that I am in awe of our God. This is just another example of the fact that we are divinely designed and we are truly, fearfully, and wonderfully made. Secondly, these foundings expound upon and confirm what I have known for a long time, that the sometimes annoying mucus that our bodies produce during times of illnesses, such as colds, is actually an amazing immune response to not only protect us, but also rid us from both bacterial and viral invaders. Much like the nose immune response that we have discussed in detail today, the lungs have a similar response, though perhaps not as sophisticated. Our throats and lungs normally produce a small amount of mucus to keep the airways moist and to have a thin covering layer that works as a protective barrier against irritants and germs you may breathe in. Coughing from time to time helps mobilize this mucus and has no damaging effect on our bodies. Coughing also allows for the rapid removal of any unwelcome particles you accidentally breathe in. A cough is a spontaneous reflex. When such things as mucus, germs, or dust irritate your throat and airways, your body automatically responds by coughing. Similar to other reflexes such as sneezing or blinking, coughing helps protect your body. Again, While an overproduction of mucus may occur during times of cold or flu or other infection, and they may be somewhat troublesome, we need to realize that inhibiting this production in the nose or lungs with medications such as antihistamines and cough suppressants 
may actually prolong the healing process and could, in fact, lead to further complications. So what is the answer? First, we want to try to feed our bodies as healthfully as possible all throughout the year. And keeping our bowels moving with good fiber from whole grains and real bread is a key factor in eliminating toxic buildup. Toxins and waste that sit too long in our colon without being eliminated can often induce this same mucus response in the form of chronic sinus congestion and post-nasal drip. If these are chronic, then the additional mucus produced by our innate immune response to a virus or a bacteria during cold or flu can become excessive, leading to the need to reach for such medications to help clear these uncomfortable symptoms. But if the mucus response is only acute during the times of illness, then the congestion is minimal. And the answer might be to simply come alongside and try to encourage these innate immune responses and flow. Now, you may be asking, well, how can I do that? And I'm sure some of you may have some proven home remedies in your war chest that you use when needed. But here is one that has worked very well for me and our family for many years and will actually complement any other treatment you may choose to use. I call it my cayenne pepper cleansing drink. I use about eight to 10 ounces of hot water. It doesn't have to be hot, but hot can be soothing to sip on, especially during cold weather or if a sore throat is involved. To the hot water, I add the juice of one fresh lime or lemon, one tablespoon of raw honey, and a tenth of a teaspoon of ground cayenne pepper that is slightly less than my one-eighth of a teaspoon measuring spoon. Cayenne pepper has some amazing benefits besides just adding a little heat to our lives. Cayenne pepper has been shown to increase circulation, which enhances the distribution of other nutrients or remedies we may be using additionally. But most importantly, in this application, cayenne pepper encourages all secreting glands to secrete. Therefore, after sipping this delicious drink, you will notice that your nose begins to run, but congestion begins to clear. And the pressure in my head and sinuses is usually relieved very quickly. One word of advice while using this drink, you may want to stir continuously while sipping or that last sip will be a hot one. My husband often exclaims that the ingredients in this drink are to simply get the cayenne pepper down, but in truth, the other ingredients play a role to promote healing as well. The juice of the fresh lemon or lime will provide about 20% of your daily requirement of vitamin C, which is well known for its antioxidant activity and to promote healing during times of illness. Honey even by itself, has been proven to have antibacterial and antiviral properties. It is very soothing to a sore throat, and studies have found that taking a spoonful of honey is even more effective than over-the-counter cough medicines. I personally experienced the soothing qualities of honey while in Israel. I shared in an earlier episode that while in Israel, I got sick along with many others on the team. I had bought some raw honey a few days before from one of the farms we visited in the hills of Samaria. Taking a spoonful of that honey was amazingly soothing to my horrible sore throat and as well as to my cough without suppressing it. I was fully recovered in just three days while others were still coughing rather profusely at the end of our two-week trip. I attribute my speedy recovery to my good, strong immune system to begin with and then helping my natural, innate immune responses along with additional honey and this cayenne pepper cleansing drink. No matter what else you may do to help get over the cold or flu or some other infection, just know that your nose and this drink can work with you to fight these foreign invaders and give you the relief you need. 
Before I close, I want to make sure to stress that nothing in this podcast should be taken as medical advice. If symptoms persist or worsen, medical advice may be necessary. But I just continue to stand in awe of the way we are created and how our bodies respond naturally to foreign invaders. My desire is to learn and encourage each of us to work with these divine designs to promote our healing. So I want to thank you for listening today. Until next time, this is Sue Becker from Bread Beckers with Sue's Healthy Minutes. Sue's Healthy Minutes podcast has been a presentation by the Bread Beckers Incorporated located in Woodstock, Georgia. For more information, store hours, and learning opportunities, visit breadbeckers.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. Share this with two friends who would benefit from this information and be sure to join us again next week for more of Sue's Healthy Minutes.